guys welcome back to my channel where we talk skincare for black skin and to my channel welcome my name is Amaka I am an esthetician and I also have a certificate in cosmetic science today we're talking about hyperpigmentation please before we continue don't forget to subscribe and give my video a thumbs up so yeah hyperpigmentation this is one of the major skin concerns for people with black skin it is daunting and then if I see 10 clients a day trust me nine of them has hyperpigmentation they're either trying to prevent it or trying to treat it do you get so we're talking about it and i want to make this topic a two-part series so in this part i'm talking about types of hyperpigmentation causes of hyperpigmentation and how melanin is formed and the next part i'm talking about treatment prevention and products that you can use to address this what is hyperpigmentation hyper as the name implies hyperpigmentation is excess production of melanin and then looking down to that I'll be on track with what's on my notes. Hyperpigmentation is excess production of melanin, excess production of pigmentation, and there are two major types of hyperpigmentation or two major triggers of hyperpigmentation. One is hormonal, and that's where you have your melasma, and the second one is a result of an inflammation that is what is known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So after an inflammation, what's an inflammation? An inflammation occurs when your body is trying to fight a foreign object, essentially. And that leads to an inflammation trigger your melanocytes, which then produces excess melanin. So there are two major causes of, of inflammation in your, in your body. So the first one is physical causes or external causes. And these are things that you put on your skin or things that happen to you from the outside. So sun exposure, microdermabrasion, chemical peels, using sensitizing ingredients, anything that has to cut, anything that comes from the outside is an external cause of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. There are internal causes, things that come from within, such as acne, ingrown hairs, eczema, and get the gist. <laughs> so yeah, and so there are major, there are two major types of hyperpigmentation: hormonal and a result of it of an inflammation and there are two major causes of inflammation external causes and internal causes so before we continue i want us to talk about sun the correlation between sun exposure and hyperpigmentation because when especially for black people you people don't use sunscreen and you guys don't get the gist you guys don't understand the correlation between both of them so let me explain very briefly the light different light that would concern you and concerns me because I guess that there are a, there's a wider spectrum but this one concerns me and you the different light that is emanated from the sun as it concerns us and this topic so you have UVAs which is the ultraviolet rays that causes aging and hyperpigmentation then UVB is, is the one that causes bonds visible light also causes hyperpigmentation and infrared radiation which is also detrimental to your skin now you don't see UVA or B what you see is visible light and what you feel as heat is infrared radiation and let me explain how the link between this to hyperpigmentation so there are three major ways the first one is increases the free radicals in our skin and once free radicals causes inflammation inflammation then leads to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that's one the second one is infrared heat like the heat itself causes inflammation in our skin and that leads to hyperpigmentation. The third one is the disruption of your basal layer which is something that you don't want to happen to you. Now sun exposure can disrupt your basal layer. Now what that happens is your basal layer is the last layer before your epidermis. That's where your melanocytes are. That is where melanin is produced. Don't worry, I'll get into that in a bit. So once that layer is disrupted, melanin then gets trapped into the dermis resulting in something called dermal hyperpigmentation when that happens hey when that happens ah, that's finished for you because cosmetics cannot work cosmetics cannot work you have to go to one hospital and then to do one procedure which you never but you're not even sure it may or may not work for you it's just impossible for normal topical products to work on it because you have gotten that's got, the pigmentation has gotten deep into your skin so you see why sun protection i know you guys when you hear cancer aging to you if you feel like it doesn't disturb you but at least when you hear hyperpigmentation and how it's directly linked to hyperpigmentation maybe just maybe you take some protection a little more seriously than you currently do yeah so aside the causes of 
melasma and PIH that's post inflammation hyperpigmentation one other major difference between both of them is how they present so melasma never really goes away you can always keep managing it but it's triggered by your hormones so a lot of times it comes it goes it gets worse it gets better it's just honestly it's just there that's one then two melasma spreads like so a lot of times it's around the side of your eye or around this area sometimes it can spread to maybe your forehead you can just you can just start anywhere do you understand whereas post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is usually at the site of the inflammation where the inflammation happened so if you had a pimple here had an acne here and it goes away the inflammation will just be there it will not spread to another place so at the site where the inflammation happened but the good thing is honestly speaking the treatments are usually the same use the same ingredient use the same product so yeah just know that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is easier to treat because once the inflammation is not there you can just address it whereas melasma because it's hormonal you know keeps coming back so yeah that's that now we've talked about you know what hyperpigmentation is and causes of it let's talk about something known as melanogenesis which essentially means the production and distribution of melanin now this is the very geeky part i'll make it very short very as simple as i can but it is very essential if you want to understand how to address hyperpigmentation it's not for people that don't want to understand so who just wants give me product give me product then just wait 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 part two is coming but if you want to understand hyperpigmentation and how to address it then keep on watching so melanogenesis melanogenesis is the production and distribution of melanin essentially what is this melanin that i'm talking about say what is melanin you may ask ah see me for me lecturer you may ask anyway melanin is the brownish pigment produced by the cells known as melanocytes Melanin has two core functions in your skin. The first one is protecting you from ultraviolet rays. That's one. The second one is it's responsible for your skin and your hair color. So color and protection. That's the major role of melanin in your skin. Now, what are melanocytes? Melanocytes are the cells that produces melanin. Now, let me explain the cell for a bit because understanding this cell is the key to treating hyperpigmentation we'll talk about the structure of the skin in a bit because you know i said this is a very geeky part of skincare so melanocytes are cells your skin is made up of three main layers you have the epidermis which is the thinnest outermost layer you have the dermis which is the major part of your skin that has your capillaries glands and all those things and you have the hypodermis subcutaneous fat at the last layer the melanocytes are situated at the basal layer of the epidermis which is the last layer the layer or where they call the dermal epidermal juncture where the epidermis and the dermis meet that is where your, melan your melanocytes are and that's why i said once this layer is disrupted melanin goes into the dermis and gets stuck there so you cannot bring it out do you understand? In your epidermis, you have two major cells. You have the keratinocyte and you have the melanocyte. They are other cells, but it doesn't concern us now. Your melanocyte, the cells in charge of producing melanin, are shaped like an octopus. So I'll put a diagram here so you guys can see what it looks like. One melanocyte is attached to several keratinocytes. Remember I told you there are two major cells melanocytes and keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are the cells that eventually go up and form what you see here. Melanocytes, at that point though, they're not called keratinocytes again, they're called conocytes, but that one's not for you. So yeah, melanocyte remains in the basal layer. They don't go up. What goes up is melanin. No, we are, we are digressing. So let's 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 understand melanocytes first. So one melanocyte is attached to several keratinocytes, and these their fingers, these their hands that they use to attach themselves to keratinocytes, are called dendrites. 
this entire structure in which the melanocyte attached to keratinocyte is called the dermal epidermal unit. Now we understand what the melanocyte looks like. Let's understand what happens inside the melanocyte. Inside the melanocyte, there are, there are two major things. One, something called tyrosinase, and the other thing is called melanosomes. Tyrosinase is the enzyme that manufactures melanin. Melanosome is where the melanin is put inside and sent to the keratinocytes. Do you get so? Imagine tyrosinase will now make melanin, put it inside melanosome, and send the melanosome into the keratinocytes. Now it goes through those dendrites, those hands, that hand attached to the keratinocyte, it goes through it and into the keratinocyte. The keratinocyte now carries it from the basal layer up. To the stratum corneum to this to a place you can see and that's how you see that melanin that was produced in the melanin side the process of going from the basal layer to the topmost part of the skin is called keratinization i like using the analogy of a food delivery business to explain this thing so if you place an order for food and let's say the food you place an order for is melanin the restaurant that you called to place that order is your melanocyte. The chef is tyrosinase. So when you call melanocyte, I'm like, oh, I want to place an order for, I want melanin, I want it very dark and chocolatey, very thick, I want cork melanin. Okay, they instruct the chef. Tyrosinase gets into work. The chef now goes, makes the food, that is your melanin, puts it in melanosomes, covers it, and send it to the delivery guy. The road in which they send it through is the dendrite. The delivery company, DHL, is your keratinocyte. So they receive your package. Oh, I'm supposed to deliver it to who? Uh, Mrs. Yinka, Mrs. Amaka, Mrs. Whoever it is. Fine. This is that carries it from that basal layer to deliver it to you. Delivery time 28 to 30 working days. That is the time it takes for your skin to turn over. So I want to know that whenever there is an inflammation in your skin, whenever you use anything that will trigger your skin and cause an inflammation, you've essentially placed an order and it will be delivered to you very soon. So you see why you have to be very careful with your skin and why this description is important is for you to know the complex stages of making and distribution of melanin and when you're addressing hyperpigmentation you have to address it from all these points you cannot just do one and leave the other one mm -mm. it's a complex thing hyperpigmentation is one of the most disturbing concerns for skin of color honestly it can reduce a person's quality of life if you like push from morning to night love yourself cherish yourself be whatever whatever in your skin blah 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 i'm not talking about bleaching here i'm talking about people that just want their color to be how their color is supposed to be dig a hyperpigmentation is an issue especially as it relates to black skin and i'll explain why now you understand the process let me tell you why you are different why hyperpigmentation in your skin is very different first one is your you have the same number of melanocytes as the caucasian skin the same number of melanocytes however your own melanocytes are easily triggered now the slightest thing triggers it the hell out that's one two your melanosomes where they package the melanin is bigger like four five times larger than in caucasian skin so you have more melanin going into there your tyrosinates are a lot more active your chef over sabi the warrior it took cook <laughs> do you understand your dendrites you know how i said the melanocytes have long hands that connect to carcinocytes yours is longer and a, and a lot more developed you get then the melanin that is cooked and sent is it doesn't degrade you know how in the caucasian skin when they make melanin and send it out most times it degrades at it degrades at the beta layer so what is even going upset is not no 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 your own is different. Your own, eh, the melanin is there and it goes, it is carried throughout all the layers of the epidermis until you see it. Now, when you understand this thing, 
you understand why you need to be very careful with your skin you understand how your the way your the way melanogenesis happen in your skin is different from caucasian skin and so you have to be careful you have to be very 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 conscious in doing things that would not sensitize your skin you can't control hormones you can't control melasma it happens it happens you can just manage it but you can't control it but you can control post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation especially as a result from external causes sun exposure using products that are too harsh for your skin you can you can prevent that as I, and as i explained it's not just uva or uvb or infrared heat so maybe you are not feeling the burn from the sun therefore i will not wear sunscreen no visible like light that you see without going under the sun causes hyperpigmentation do you understand so you are coming and black and blah, blah 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 you need to appropriately protect your skin i cannot emphasize this enough anyway um, that brings us to the end of this i don't want to keep preaching and preaching and preaching that brings us to the end of this video watch out for part two you won't have to wait for long don't worry it should be out in one or two days we will talk about treatment prevention and products that you could try out thank you guys so much for watching and see you in my next video bye